welcome back to the 12 days of soap -mas. Today, I am going to be making a soap inspired by one of your comments. Now, I have tried to find this comment. Caroline and I have turned our entire comment section on Instagram and YouTube upside down looking for this thing and we cannot find it. But many weeks ago, somebody watched the succulent soap and was like, you know what you should do? You should take that succulent mold and make poinsettias out of it by turning the soap red. So instead of doing greens and purples and stuff, pour red soap into there and oh, the perfect poinsettia for Christmas time. So that's what I'm doing. I am not the first soap maker to have this idea. Well, I mean, in all fairness, I didn't have this idea. I'm just following what I saw on a comment, but I'm not the first soap maker to do it. After I filmed this video, I went on Instagram and saw that Milkmaid Soap Co. has done this, and who knows how many other people have done it. That's just the one person I know of who has done it, and if you haven't seen all of her stuff, they're definitely worth looking at. I've shouted that company out on this channel before, so go give them a like and follow, and uh, yeah, let's make some poinsettia soap. So, of course, the first thing we actually do is make the poinsettia embed. So, one thing you can do is use a piping tip to make them. There are lots of tutorials on YouTube of this method using buttercream frosting so that people can decorate Christmas cakes. But today, I'm going to be using these Wilton silicone embeds. This is what we use for our succulent mold. And then into my melt and pour, I'm going to be adding two colorants. Both of them are from TKV Trading. First, I have this Ruby Gel Tone, and then I have Tomato Red Concentrate. The Ruby Gel Tone is going to deepen up the Tomato Red, but the Tomato Red, I feel, is going to be like the primary color. I just wanted it to be a little bit darker. Mix that up real quick. Yeah. That's a little bit translucent, so I'm going to add a little bit more of the gel tone. Mix it up a little bit more. That's a little bit more like it. And as I'm mixing, I am going to spritz with some rubbing alcohol. This particular melt and pour is getting a little bit of a film on it, mainly just because the melt and pour is a little bit older. Sometimes that happens, especially if it sits out like on your counter. It can dry out a little bit, so it's always a good idea to keep your melt and pour in like a Ziploc bag if you have extra, but mine has been sitting in an open container in the corner untouched, so I really should uh, go ahead and take my own advice on that so that I can avoid it. And then as far as which ones I'm going to be using, I brought this mold in to my mom and was like, hey, I'm going to make a poinsettia soap. And she specifically told me not to use these bigger ones because she was like, they're kind of flat and poinsettias always have some like sharper looking petals. So don't use the one that looks really roundy. Use the one that's a little more defined. So that's what I'm going to do. Just gonna pour about yay much and it's still kind of translucent. I wonder if that's gonna be an issue later on. We'll have to see. I think to fill up an entire soap mold I'm gonna have to do two batches of poinsettias. How do you guys like to pronounce that word? Do you say poinsettia or poinsetta? And it doesn't matter to me if my melt and pour kind of mounds up a little bit because um, it is going to be put into a mold so you're not going to see the side that is currently facing the camera. That will be hidden by the soap. All right, guys, say it. Say it out loud at your computer or your mobile phone. You know what comes first. We're going to pour the lye water solution into our oils. That's right. I would like to get a count on how many times I've said that phrase. <laughs> the recipe that I'm using today can be found in the description box below. It's the one that I use in all of my videos unless otherwise specified. And now we blend up on high until just past emulsion. <laughs> Now, for this soap, I have decided I want to actually do like four 
accent colors, all of them red and green. So I have two greens and two reds, and I just think it's going to look so perfect with those embeds. And because I do not have to remake this batch, I'm just eyeballing everything. I would like quite a bit of the soap to be white, but I know with how big this batch is that even if I fill these up to the tippy top, I'm gonna have a ton left over. And that's why I opted for the smaller containers instead of my trusty white pitchers. I got a little bit of false trace going on with this batter, um, meaning that it's not fully emulsified and also that my room is cold, but I am not worried at all because I still have to blend in all of my fragrance oil and colorants. So having a little modeling, having a little separation, absolutely no big deal at this point in time. So let's talk colors. The first thing that I'm adding is Green Vibrance. This is from Nurture Soap. Then we're going to add my own special concoction. And I can't tell you exactly what it is because I didn't measure it. <laughs> Everything has been eyeballed, but the components are green oxide, black oxide, and green vibrance. So I'm hoping to get an actual Christmas green with this that isn't blue toned. I want a yellow, warm, dark green, which seems to be very difficult for me personally to achieve. And then we're going to add in some trial by fire. Also from Nurture Soap. It is a really handy red. It's my go-to for anything that is a true red. And then we have some Queen Catherine mixed with black oxide. So we've really, really deepened that up. These are the more modern Christmas colors. These are the more traditional like Victorian Christmas colors. I hope when we marry them all up together, it looks perfect. And then for our fragrance soil, we're using Fairy Dust by Nature's Garden. This is a lush duplication scent, and it is one of the most highly requested fragrances on Instagram. So tons of people ask me to make soap with this, and here you go. And finally, we're going to be adding a lot, and I do mean a lot of titanium dioxide to our base. I want it white, not cream, not off-white. I want it super, super bright white. All right, let's start blending. I'm actually going to begin uh, with the white. Even though white tends to thicken soap, I have much more of it than I have the colors, and I don't want to blend up like a red and then put that red stick blender into the white because it'll tint it pink. These colors are looking fantastic. It's at the perfect consistency. Couldn't be happier. Let's go ahead and pour this into our workshop heritage slab mold after this quick commercial break. I'm going to begin by pouring in about half of my white soap base. It's creamy. It's starting to get thick, which means that it's going to look really, really good with the drop swirl I'm about to do. I'm going to begin by pouring in the darkest red color, and I'm pouring in both the reds first because I don't want the reds at the top of the soap since our poinsettia embeds are red. I want the greens to be the accents up top. So I'm going to make sure that all the red goes in on this first little bit so there's none gloop into the very tippy top. And now we'll add some green. And I'm not entirely sure how this is going to look uh, just because uh, some of the soaps are a little bit of a different consistency. My white is a little bit thicker than my reds and my greens are thicker than my reds but thinner than my whites. So could be kind of swirly could be a little bit gloopy we'll just have to see all all the same i think it's gonna be it's gonna be a good batch i'm gonna drop a little bit of white into the soap as well before i use the rest for the top and now i'm gonna drop in the rest of the red so i'm already able to see i probably won't be able to cover up all the red that is in this batch it kind of gloop gloop to the top whenever i put that white in but I am unconcerned. <laughs> I 
think it'll be fine. All right, a little more of that dark kind of burgundy red there. And then at this point in time, I'm going to drop a little more white in and then start ladling it on the top, especially over the areas that have a lot of red. Some will still peek through, but it won't be nearly as bad as it is right now. And now on the top, I'm just gonna flick the lighter colored green. So I'm gonna save the darker green for a little bit of piping. I know I never do piping on slabs, but I figured for this soap, it would probably be a good idea because poinsettias have beautiful leaves. I'm looking at how much dark green I have left and honestly, I don't need all of it. So I am gonna go ahead and put some on top. Now I'm gonna tap this down on the ground and now to swirl. I'm gonna be using a pipette to do this and I'm just gonna swirl randomly and we're gonna start with the edges. We wanna make sure that those guys get incorporated sometimes they can be left behind and that's not nearly as fun. And after I've done most of it, I'll come back through and kind of swirl maybe in this direction. Just want to make sure that every bar feels nice and swirled. Get some of those red bits, make it look a little bit more random. Then I'm gonna tap this down once more to make sure that all the air bubbles on top are not there anymore. Okay, and now we can start placing all those poinsettias that we made the other day. Now they're a little bit frosty. I'm not gonna lie, there's been a little bit of a condensation in this room, but don't worry, I'll spritz them all with rubbing alcohol and it will look a lot better after that. I've actually got them all placed out in a separate mold, so I kind of know where the spacing should be. It helps cut down on the actual manufacturing time, since if you're having to think about where you're gonna place everything, that can really add up, especially if your soap is like setting up and you're trying to rush. Now, looking at all of these kind of traditional Christmas colors reminds me that Caroline and I are doing our Christmas party. It's the second one. We would like to make this a yearly tradition. So last year we had the best time. I did most of the decorating and Caroline did most of the cooking and we held it at my house and we did big, long, beautiful tables and I got some linen. I've always wanted to get linen from Europe and I got some linens because I knew I'll be using this <laughs> over and over as the years go on. We got orange garlands. We did all the traditional everything. She and I even made a Pinterest board that we're gonna be using again this year. And it's mainly inspired, for those of y'all who have seen this movie, and I hope it's most of you watching, the Little Women from the 90s. So not the new one, but the old one with Winona Ryder. That is the best Christmas movie to me ever. I know tons of people like love Hallmark movies. That's my go-to Christmas film. The soundtrack is just impeccable. It makes me feel so romantic and so old fashioned. And so that was kind of our main inspiration. So we tried to cook traditional like foods like a chicken and a ham. And when everybody arrived, we played the Orchard House main title from the movie. Now, if you've never heard it, go listen to it on Spotify or on YouTube because it just, I mean, it makes me a little bit teary every time I hear it because it just, it reminds me of my childhood and I just love it. So we're getting ready to do our Christmas party again this year. It's actually gonna be the week of Christmas. I'll probably share some pictures on my personal Instagram if you guys wanna see it. We're inviting loved ones and it's gonna be held at night, like a traditional dinner. So we're gonna do it kind of late. We're gonna be making Christmas speeches and singing Christmas carols. Both my husband and Caroline's husband are musically gifted. So we're kind of hoping maybe they will play some Christmas carols for the party. We think that would be really fun for everyone to gather around and sing Christmas carols. But yeah, that's what I'm living for right now. That's what I'm doing in my free time. It's kind of prepping for that event because it's just gonna be so fun. And that's a tip for you creative small business owners. Be sure you're doing other creative things outside of your business. I find that that really helps me with burnout. Now you guys, watch the transformation. I'm gonna spritz this with rubbing alcohol just to kind of clear up all of the little fogginess first. And then I'm gonna add some piping and the glitter. But first I wanna clear it up. So watch how it transforms from looking like this 
to the red, red, red color of those poinsettias or poinsettias. How do you prefer to say it? I'm sure that's different depending on where you are regionally. Another thing I might do for this soap to make those poinsettias stand out even more is take a little bit of Sparkle Me Gold and spritz them accordingly because that will really show all the dimension and detail. But for right now, I need to load up my piping bag. So I have loaded up a small piping bag with one of the tips from the Royalty Soaps piping set. And I'm just going to be adding randomly some little leaves all over everybody over here. And what I'll probably do is start with like random leaves everywhere. And then if I have a lot left, I'll make sure that every single poinsettia gets some and I'll rotate my mold. That way I have leaves going in different directions and not just ones facing me. It. Now, if I ever make this soap again, I might even make the poinsettias a little more opaque. They're a little translucent right now, which looks really nice, but having them more opaque might help me with seeing the definition on top. Also, I just love the frosting. Having all those little leaves really does set it apart. All right, I will be back soon, guys, and we'll split this slab into loaves and cut the loaves into bars after this quick commercial break. Guys, this soap, it is giving me life. It is bringing the holiday season and it is absolutely a complete and total boost of serotonin. I'm going to cut this very, very carefully with my cutter from Goodspeed Cutters. I honestly need to get another one from them because um, I didn't order one tall enough and I prefer their cutter over the other two that I have, but not when it can't cut my high tops. <laughs> so I need to go get another one. This one is perfect for low tops though. Oh yeah, Merry Christmas. Also, look at this green. Finally, I have been trying to get that green color for so long. So now I just know I've got to do green vibrance plus green oxide plus black oxide. And that will get me that deep hunter green that isn't blue <laughs> that I've been going for. Um, but I, I could not be more delighted with these bars. It really is perfect. Now, the question of the day happens to be another functional one because after I made this and Caroline was like, oh my gosh, I would buy this. You have to add it to your next Christmas lineup. I would love to know, is this something you would wanna see in our holiday lineup in 2022? Is that something you wanna see on your countertops for Christmas or you want to give to grandma? or your best friend or something? Let me know in the comments below. I probably would add more poinsettias. I didn't add as many in this batch as I would if we remade it. Like I would wanna make sure every single bar had one, at least one, but yeah. Let me know what you think. And I, ugh, it smells so good too. The fairy dust scent isn't too sweet. And I think I like that. I think I like that for this bar, but I am, I'm really obsessed. This is super fun. Well, I couldn't be more pleased. I really couldn't. I love this bar so much. And hey, if you're interested in getting one of these, they'll be available with our January soap release. That is the Royal Vault collection. We do it every single year. It's all of our best sellers from the year before. And there are a couple changes coming to Royalty Soaps in 2022. We'll talk about that in a later video. But be sure you hop over to Instagram today. There will be an image. It looks like this. And I will be giving away five bars of this soap to five different winners. It is super easy to enter. All you have to do is follow me on Instagram and like some photos. I'll show you which ones in the Instagram stories 
open worldwide, enjoy, go enter, have an absolutely royal day, and thanks for tuning in to the 2021 Soap Miss. Anyways, be sure you do something fun for yourself today, like listening to one of your favorite Christmas tunes with loved ones, or going to pick up a poinsettia from the store if that's something you have near you and you don't have animals around, because I'm pretty sure they're not good for animals. I don't really care what you do, just be sure you do something fun for you, and I will see you guys in the next video. So until then, bye for now! Yeah.